Well, uh, am I the only one? I mean, do I have any brothers or sisters? Yes, you have one brother in the Air Force. Is there anyone else? No, no one else. Do you have to? I could have killed the time somehow. Oh, why didn't you kill it outside? Why don't you join me? I don't know how you can stay so calm. You're in as much trouble as I am if Rambo goes down the drain. Uh, I'll manage. OK, I'm going. Oh, Mr Hamilton, I didn't expect you to come rushing back from the West. I was booked to come home anyway, but when you rang and said Angela was ill, I made time to stop over. I can't stop long. Oh, hello there. Pleasant surprise. Oh, I'm so sorry you've wasted your time. Angela's under doctor's orders. No visitors at all. I should have told you on the telephone. We're in the same boat. I uh, drop by to see you too. Please. You could try getting in touch with the doctor. Or, although last time he was here really did lay down the law. I can't really see him changing his mind. What a shame. Oh, well, if it means she's on the mend quicker. Oh, I'm sure you'll be one of the first people she wants to see. It'll mean so much to her when she's feeling better. I wish Patricia had called me straight after the miscarriage. Wishful thinking, I suppose, but I may have been able to do something. Well, you know what she's like. It's probably why she didn't call. Oh, come on. No, I wouldn't put it past her. Not after what she did to me. Now, I know you don't like her. You can't blame me for how I feel. No, maybe not. But the share business was a long time ago. There's no point in dragging that up again. But that's the least of it. There's a lot you don't know. Well, for one thing, she says she's all concerned for Angela, but where is she now? She's up in Sydney waiting for you. Making a last-ditch effort to get you back to Ramberg. She's entitled to try. Oh, don't be so damn noble. The woman is a total con. You have nothing to gain by sticking the knife in. Believe me, I'm not just trying to bad mouth her. Now, you did me a big favour when I went to court. The least I can do is try and pay you back. Let you know the whole truth. She came up to Wombai with Wayne purely to cause trouble for me. The two of them did their damnedest to get me to have another go at him. So I wouldn't have a leg to stand on in court. And when it backfired, she tried to bribe Margaret into perjuring herself. I'm afraid so. I wouldn't bother telling you all this, but I don't want to see you conned by her again. No worries about that. I didn't know any of what you told me, but nothing she did would surprise me anymore. I've already accepted a partnership with Barbara's brother. I'm going up to Sydney now to get things rolling, but thanks for your advice. It removes any last qualms I had about leaving Ramberg to sort out his own problems. Thanks for sticking around while I spoke to the witch doctor. Well, it couldn't have been that bad. No, it wasn't actually. Good. And he asked me so many questions, I feel worn out. You want to lie down? Yeah, I think I might. Hmm. Caught me. Here. No, not for me, no. I'm not worried about your weight. No. Angela? No, it seemed to go all right, actually. Uh, it's Peter. Oh, did you run into him? At the terrace. I'll never forget his look. He said that I should have been the one that was killed, not Jennifer's father. Oh, what does he know about what happened during the war? Enough to stir up all the guilt that I've been pretending for years, wasn't there? I am sorry. I'll never forget the look on Barry's face. I was taking off. He was running, trying to reach me. I saw the shell hit him. I never knew I was so dependent on the good opinion of my kids. Oh, I got used to Adam's rejection of me. Well, almost. 
But I don't know how I could face up to losing Peter. Jen, too. Without you around to talk to. And Patricia. Knowing she loves me is the one thing that keeps me going. Martin. Yes? Oh, nothing. We can wait. Thank you, that's fine. I've been getting some exercise. I was going to put it away. Good. Mother's here. She's been waiting to see you. I know, she could have saved us off a trip. Hello, Gordon. Patricia. Why didn't you call me the moment Angela fell ill? I've just come from Melbourne. I know exactly what's going on. Don't get upset. I've come here specifically to tell you all about it. Really? I'm aware that you're here to twist my arm about going back to Ramberg. Well, save your energy. I wouldn't work with you again if my life depended on it. Gordon! No, I mean it. I've already agreed to go into partnership with Barbara's brother. So you're too late anyway. And my decision is final. Oh, fine. Go ahead. Sit back and watch me lose every cent. But Angela is a very sick girl and her treatment's going to cost a lot of money. She can rely on me for any amount of support, financial or otherwise. It's not going to work, Patricia. And you'll have to brush up on your pathetic look if you want to get around me that way. I made a big mistake when I bought up the controlling interest in Ramberg and pushed you out. It was petty, stupid and very bad business. Yes. I'd like to undo the damage. I promise you, you can have an absolutely free hand. No interference, nothing. Name your price. Don't, Patricia. But you're not even giving me a hearing. Because I've heard all I need to from Paul. I saw him in Melbourne on the way home. Oh, you can't believe a word he says. You know he hates me. And well deserved, I'd say. I honestly think we've said it all. Gordon, please. I mustn't lose my money. I can't. Please? Don't beg, Patricia. I would never beg anything from you. Oh, you'd love to see me go under, wouldn't you? I'll manage. He's done it. Our old friend Paul got to him first. Yeah, I heard him say they spoke to him in Melbourne. Yes. Your eavesdropping's up to its usual standard. What about me? You reckon Paul sunk the boot into me as well? What do you think? I was going to ask Gordy if he'd take me into the new firm. I would bank on it. What about you? Well, without him, I'm broke. I've got two choices. Either I put up with it, or I actually go ahead and marry Martin. Well, at least he'll support me until something better comes along. Yes, I'll hold. I have no intention of being poor. I'd like a taxi to the airport, please. There you are. Good as gold. Thanks. It's been hanging on by a thread for days. Jen used to fuss about all the little details. Must be a shock living on your own all of a sudden. I've never had to manage by myself before. That's why I'll be glad when Patricia and I are finally married. What about you? After the wedding? Mm. Oh, I'll manage. I've had plenty of time with just my own company. It's nice of you to ask, sir. I really am interested. I feel we've become real good friends again. I'm glad you and Patricia sorted your problems out. What's wrong? <sighs> Come on. Everything Patricia has told you is a pack of lies. She doesn't want me around her. She hates me. And if you want to know the truth, she feels exactly the same about you. What did they say? 
you were right. The reception place has never heard of Patricia. There's no record of a booking in her name or mine. I hate to say it, but I'm just as right about everything else. There's no wedding dress. No friend or relative of Patricia's has been invited. She's no intention of having me as a bridesmaid. Her idea is to humiliate you in front of your friends. They'd all show up, so would you, but... She wouldn't. I believed every word. I believe she loved me just as much as I... I wanted to tell you sooner, but I was scared. Even now, I don't know what she'll do. Good. You've got nothing to worry about if I see her first. Oh, you've got to be extremely careful. If you as much as look like touching her, she'll have the police around in no time at all. She's not going to get away with it. I can understand how you feel. You don't know the half of it. If I were you, I'd leave her alone. Unless it... What? Oh, no. No, I'm a, I must keep right out of it. Tell me. Well, the one area where Patricia is vulnerable is Angela. Well, she didn't think twice about using your children when she wanted to get at you. I guess you've heard some things about me. Enough. I just wanted to make sure you know the truth. A bit of a novelty for you? Will you give me a chance? When you've had so many chances, I've lost count. OK, write me off without a fair hearing. But I honestly thought we were getting somewhere, as friends. Some hope. I will try to stick to the facts. Good. I don't know how much you've been told. It's true, I did go along with Mother. Tried to make it bad for Paul. It was her idea, though. He could have spent a long time in jail. Did you ever think of that? <sighs> Mother was pressuring me. You know what she's like. Yes. I did try to get out of it. That's what we were arguing about outside of court. I wanted to forget the whole thing. Left it a bit late. Paul got off, didn't he? If I'd gone along, he'd have been sunk. Maybe. Why do you think I was so keen to come to Sydney? I didn't want to get mixed up in any more schemes. I heard you were here to soften me up about going back to Ramberg. Mother's idea again. But have I once? The whole time I've been here, have I, have I said anything to try and force you into it? No. I didn't, because for the first time we could actually talk without snapping and snarling at each other. Something for the Guinness Book of Records, I suppose. Right. What do you reckon? I'm not entirely convinced. Maybe you're not quite as much to blame as I thought. Thank you. I can stay then. Provided you have nothing more to do with Patricia. Absolutely nothing. Done. Did everything go all right? Yes. Relief? I hope you don't think I'm doing this just to get back at Patricia. Of course not. Something's come through very strongly in talking to Angela. She's terribly confused. She needs to be around people she can trust. Patricia's obviously not one of them. Of course, I, I wouldn't have suggested it if I hadn't thought that it was right for her. Right. Well, we'll be off as soon as she comes down. <clears throat> I can't help wondering about you, though. Oh, I'll be fine. Leaving you here to face Patricia on your own doesn't seem right. Don't worry, I can handle her. I have to pack up a few of my bits and pieces. Well, if you need somewhere to stay... Actually, 
It would help for a day or so. I, I, I could help Angela to settle in. Well, come for as long as you like. <sighs> it's nice to know. And if Patricia gives you any trouble, let me know. Ah, well, let's get you home. What a wild goose chase that turned out to be. Thanks to you and Paul. You're in my light. I'd like to know what's been going on here. Martin, go around. I'm not interested in Martin. But you should be. I'll have plenty of time to talk to him once I've dealt with you. I think you might like to know that Martin's taken Angela to his house. To stay. I'll be leaving myself shortly. What the hell are you talking about? Well, you already seem to know I put Gordon into the picture. He was very grateful. So was Martin. What have you been telling him? Oh, a few details. Like the fact you've no intention of fronting up to the wedding. You interfering. He wouldn't believe you. Oh, but he does. That's why it was so easy to convince him to take Angela away. You see, he doesn't think you're fit enough to be her mother. You wanted to see me at rock bottom, didn't you? You wanted to build me up and pull the rug out from under me. Well, it looks like it's the other way around. I'm going to try and undo the damage that you've caused. But God help you if you're here when I get back. No right to bring her here. She's confused enough as it is. I want to see her. I told you she's asleep. Look, you can talk till you're blue in the face. You're not getting her back. Martin, I realize that you're upset. I would be too if somebody started spouting ridiculous lies to me. And Margaret is a very warped person. I've known it for a long time. What I didn't realize was that you had so little trust in me. You can't possibly believe her. Why should I? I checked out her story. Look, you may think I'm a fool, Patricia, but I'm not utterly stupid. Aren't you? You believed I could love you. You lapped up all the flattery and all the compliments. You're not only stupid, Martin, you're a joke. The big Air Force hero using a sick, defenseless girl to get back at me. Oh, it doesn't surprise me that you left your best friend to die. Look, I think you'd better no, leave. No wonder you're stuck behind a desk. You haven't got the guts to handle anything else. It's all right. I'm leaving. But you can be damn sure you haven't heard the last of this. By the time I'm through, everyone... All your Air Force cronies, your precious John, they'll all know what you really are. Can't see you being too popular when that story gets around. Oh, and there's no way you're keeping Angela. I made up the bed in the spare room. Thank you, I hope you haven't gone to any trouble. No, as a matter of fact, I haven't even got anything for dinner. Would you like me to fix something? You can help yourself to whatever's in the fridge. I'm not hungry. What about Angela? She's still resting. Have you seen Patricia? Yes. Well, maybe I'll go and unpack. Perhaps you'll be hungry later. I could fix you one of my specials. No, thank you. 
I understand how you're feeling. It's absolutely devastating to discover someone you loved and trusted. Maybe she's right. Maybe I am a total failure. You could hardly call my life an unqualified success. Forty years. What have I got to show? Family I've driven away. Empty house. I've lost them, along with everything else that mattered. Any self-respect I might have had. What else is there? You mustn't be so hard on yourself. Sure, I could have gone on fooling myself, as I've done the last 12 years. If it only hadn't come out. But it has, and now I can't fool myself anymore. I left Barry to die to save my own neck. What am I supposed to do? Pretend it never happened? Knowing Patricia, she will tell everyone, and I couldn't face the men at the base. You must go and have a rest. You'll feel better in the morning. What am I doing? Using a sick girl to get back at Patricia. I'm starting to play her game. Angela needs to get away from her. Then take her somewhere and look after her. It's got nothing to do with me anymore. Martin, you are depressed, but it is not the end of the world. You've got friends that care about you. I care about you. At least I have one friend. I don't want to just be another friend to you. Oh, don't you see? I'm in love with you. I never stopped loving you. What are you talking about? I'm talking about us. You and me. You can't be serious. Why not? Because it's ridiculous. You are serious, aren't you? Yes, I am. I could make you far happier than Patricia could. I could look after you. You need me. My God, you told me about Patricia, so this would happen. Oh, I did that for your sake. I didn't want Patricia to hurt you. The whole thing's sick. Look, I want you to leave. You don't understand. Get out of here. And take Angela with you. What? Please. You're upset. Get out of here! I tied it with the whole damn lot of you! coming. Mr. Palmer? Yeah. Mr. David Palmer? That's right. What is it? Summons. What for? It concerns a restraining order, sir. Good night. You think a bit of pain against something from seeing Angela? You got another bloody thing coming? Oh, I'll go and tell it to the magistrate, David. She's not here. Oh, come off it. Feel free. She's not here. She's with Martin. How come? I had to go away for the day. When I got back, she wasn't here. He must have spun her some story. You could help me get her back. 
What's going on with you and Martin? Oh, we had a disagreement. Please, David, you will help me. Martin's the worst person she could be with right now. <laughs> I don't believe you, Pat. Uh, one minute you're slapping a restraining order on me, next minute you ask me to help me get her back. Please help me, David. Just, just get her back here. I'll cancel everything. You can see her whenever you like. She's sick, David. She needs to be with me. I'll get her back, all right. But she'll be coming home with me. Restraining order or no restraining order. any respect you've ever had for me and I know I'll lose yours, John, when you hear of my cowardice. Peter and Jen, whether you believe it or not, your good opinion was important to me. Hope that your lives will be happy. I think that you will be better off without me. I have lived with the guilt of Barry's death for 12 years. Don't think it hasn't always been on my conscience. Whether you believe it or not, I love you all. Despite anything that happened between us, John, I still love your mother. That's what makes it hard losing her, knowing she hates you. I you. I loved you.
Anyone home? before I came over to get Angela. No, no one answered the door. The door was open. I walked in here and I found Martin lying there. I saw the gun and then I realised it had been shot. Then why did you touch it? I didn't. I, I just picked it up. I, I don't know. I hear. Look, I don't know what happened. He, he was just lying there when I walked in. Can I go now? I'm, Get Angela away. She's upset enough as it is. She's being looked after by a policewoman. There are still a few things we'd like to clear up. I told you everything I know. Oh, come on. This is ridiculous. We have a very upset young lady next door who says you killed her father. Look, I've already told you. He was, he was dead when I got here. She said she was woken by a loud noise. She walked into the living room and found you standing over her father with a gun in your hand. I just picked it up. Look, I didn't kill him. I had no reason. Look, you've already told us about the restraining order taken out to stop you seeing Mr Healy's daughter. Yeah, but... I mean, you don't kill a bloke for something like that. People have been killed for a lot less. Uh, perhaps there was a fight when you got here, Mr Palmer. Perhaps Mr Healy threatened you with a gun and there was a struggle. Well, was there a struggle, Mr Palmer? Uh... Suppose that during the struggle, a shot was fired which killed Mr. Healy. He was dead when I got here. Somebody shot him, Mr. Palmer? You're our only suspect so far. It's not true. Why did you kill him? stove when I got back. Nearly burnt the place down. Well, it's David's dinner. Where is he? Oh, search me. He must have put it on, forgot about it, then went out. What are you looking for? My gun. It's missing again. Well, you won't find it in there. No, I suppose not. I wish people would leave my things alone. And I've told you before, I don't want it in the house, ever. All right. All right. A man can't even keep an historic rally without people objecting. wonder if Kevin and Peter have got it. I'll bring him at the terrace. Dad, it's 11 o'clock. And what would they want with your silly gun? Well, you never know. And I told Victor I'd show it to him. There's no rush. Ask the boys about it when they come home. I'd just like to get it cleared up. Yes, and I'd like to clear up where David is. Well, it's not like him to be late. I can see you're upset, Miss Dunn, but we have to ask you some questions. Of course. I'm... I'm sorry, it's just a shock. I understand. Now, when were you speaking to Mr Healy? Oh, early this evening before I went out. And when would that have been? About quarter to eight. How was he? Was he uh, depressed or anything? No, he was quite normal. You don't honestly think that David could have been responsible for Martin's death, do you? He was discovered standing over the body holding the murder weapon. And we know there had been trouble between them. Oh, that's ridiculous. I know David. He wouldn't kill anyone. He's... He's not the type. Who is the type, Miss Dunn? My sister. And she had the motive. You're not seriously suggesting that I'm involved in Martin Healy's death. We're not suggesting anything, Mrs. Hamilton, but we do have to make inquiries. Now, where were you at about 10 o'clock tonight? I was here all night. Can you prove it? I was on the phone to a business associate in Sydney. I got the call about 10 o'clock, and it lasted for half an hour. Well, that's an expensive phone call. Not to my friends, Inspector. I see. We'll check that, Mrs. Hamilton. Please do. 
Quite frankly, I don't know why you're bothering. Obviously, you've got the right man. Oh, why is that? David Palmer was here earlier tonight. He'd just been served with the restraining order, but he was still determined to see my daughter. Well, why did you take out the restraining order? He's a violent, dangerous man. There's no doubt in my mind that he shot Martin. I understand you were engaged to Mr. Healy. Yes, I was, but I had second thoughts. You don't seem very concerned that he's dead. My feelings are my own affair. If you want to know, I'm more concerned about my daughter. She's being well looked after. She's in shock, but... Then she'll need me. If that's all? For the moment, you've been very helpful, Mrs. Hamilton. I'll see you out. Sorry to have troubled you so late. You have to do your duty. Yeah. Right. We may have to talk to you again. If you have to. Good night. Good night. Yes, I'd like a taxi as soon as possible, please. Oh, for heaven's sake, Dad. Look, why don't you go to bed like you said you would? you will turn up. At least he could have done is left me a note. Mrs. Palm? Oh, yes. I'm Detective Sergeant Anderson. May I come in? Oh, of course. Is David Palmer your husband? What's happened? Is he all right? Oh, there was a shooting earlier tonight. Not David. No, the dead man's name is Martin Healy. Oh, no. Now, look, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, Mrs. Palmer, but we're holding your husband. What do you mean? Well, he's been charged with Mr. Healy's murder. My daughter. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't go in. Why not? Well, the forensic team are just finishing up. No members of the public can go in until they've completed their investigations. But I, I am Angela Keegan's mother, the, the girl that was here when Mr. Healy was shot. Where is she? Well, she's gone. She left half an hour ago. But I, I was told that she was in shock. I mean, where did she go? Who was with her? Well, Miss Dunn took her away. She didn't say where they were going. Excuse me. How is she? Sleeping soundly. Here, that'll make you feel better. Thank you. I really appreciate you bringing her here. I couldn't think of anywhere else to go. Oh. Really shaken up. It was a terrible thing to happen. I always thought that one day Martin and I would. That's all gone now. I hadn't realised you were so close to him. <laughs> if it hadn't been for Patricia, I'm worried about Angela. Patricia might guess she's here. Well, too bad if she does. Angela needs all the care she can get. I won't let Patricia have her back. Good. If we're lucky, the police might just make sure she doesn't have a chance to. What do you mean? They're interviewing her about Martin's death. Could be the only place she's going to is jail. Now, don't worry, Beryl. Everything will work out, you'll see. I just wish I was at home. None of this would have happened. Don't go blaming yourself. Nothing you could have done to stop it. I could have stopped him from rushing off. Hey, come on, Mum, don't be like that. Oh, uh, how did Peter and Jennifer take it? It's hard to tell. They were both pretty spaced out when I left. When I called, I could hear Peter laughing in the background. It felt terrible knowing what I had to say. You've got enough worries of your own, love. Rob will look after them. Are you all right? 
Yeah, it's just... I don't know what I expected. It all looks so normal. It's like nothing. Would you like a drink of water? Yes, thanks. Hang in there, Jen. I can't help thinking about it. It's all so... Wouldn't it be better if we just went back to the terrace? I don't know what you came over here for in the first place. There are things to do. To ring Adam and Gran and to know what's happened. To sort some of Dad's papers out. Get on to his solicitor tomorrow and things like that. It's 1.30 in the morning. I want to do it now. What about Jennifer? You'll be okay, won't you, Jen? There you go. Thanks. I'm all right now. You sure? Yeah. Well, if there's any arrangements I can help with, I'd rather do it myself. I'd leave you alone now. If you don't mind, I'll do whatever you want. Thanks, Rob. You've been a big help. Thanks for lift over. It's all right. Bye. Bye. You don't even seem upset. Why should I? I hated him. You'll call Adam. I'll just have to wait till they get back to Paris. Sure. Well, thank you, operator. I appreciate all of your trouble. Bye. No luck? Adam and Gran have gone touring in the country somewhere to hire a car. No one knows when they'll be back? We tried. There's nothing more we can do. Well, I have to start getting these things together. The charities will do all right. Adam. Don't you feel anything? He's dead, Peter. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> we had lots of good times together. Don't you remember? Of course I remember. <laughs> yeah, well, you wouldn't think so. Jen. I haven't seen you even close to crying. Well, I would feel a hypocrite after all of those things that I said to him. I don't care what anyone said. He's still our dad, and I loved him. <laughs> I know. Damn, that's typical of Patricia. She could talk her way out of anything. I thought you were being pretty hopeful last night. There's obviously no case against her. Of course there is. She hated Martin. If the police have arrested David Palmer, they must be pretty sure of their facts. Oh, she's at the bottom of this. I told them. Damn! Oh, David was after him. Angela saw him over the body with a gun. Well, what other explanation is there? To talk to you? I don't remember inviting you in. I've just read the newspaper about David's arrest. How did you manage to worm your way out of it? Oh, I might have guessed. You set the police on to me, didn't you? You deserve to go to jail. You're as guilty as if you pulled the trigger. I didn't have anything to do with it. I was on the phone at the time. Perfect alibi. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to David's committal hearing to collect Angela. I wouldn't bother. She's not going to be there. What are you talking about? She's not well enough to appear. I've taken her to where you won't find her. I want her back by this afternoon or it becomes a police matter. Oh, don't be ridiculous, Patricia. She's old enough to make her own decisions. I just have to get her to tell them she doesn't want to be with you. One thing Martin did before he died was to make sure she didn't trust you. I might not have got you arrested, but I'll make damn sure you don't get your daughter back. That's a good second. I lay awake thinking about you last night. Well, when we first arrived, I, I didn't recognize you, but I had the feeling that you'd been a friend of mine once. I was. Don't try and force it. The important thing is for you to uh, get better and feel safe. I do feel safe here. Uh, had I been here before last night? I had some happy times here, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, you did. 
Mrs. Palmer. Yes. Alan Gaskell. How do you do? Oh, uh, this is my son, Kevin, uh, and uh, my brother, Rob Keegan. How do you Hi. Do? How are you? Now, I've got some preparation to do before the uh, hearing. I was hoping to talk to you about David and um, how he is. Well, I can go one better than that. I've made arrangements for you to see him. I'm sorry, just Mrs. Palmer. Oh, fine. Yeah, it's OK. Yeah. Now, I don't worry. I'll do everything I possibly can for your husband. It will be all right, man. Everything will turn out for the best, Mrs. Palmer, believe me. I'll pick you up in about 15 minutes. Bye. Mrs. Palmer. Yes, I'm, I'm Margaret Dunn. Angela's aunt. Oh, pleased to meet you. Look, I, I just wanted to say how sorry I am that this has happened. I know your husband couldn't have done it. He'll soon be released and everything will be cleared up. Please don't worry. Thank you. They got you working. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry to hear about your dad. That's all right. No love lost between us. I thought I'd better drop this back. I hope you don't mind. I meant to tell you last night. I used it for target practice. That mate of yours from the range called and said there was a vacancy and you weren't you home. You stupid young fool. What do you mean? You damned idiot. You know what you put Beryl through? She thinks David used that gun to shoot your father. Worried. Everything's going to be all right. They've made a mistake, that's all. Come on, don't start crying. <laughs> Makes your eyes go funny. <laughs> I've spoken to the solicitor, and he said I should be able to get out on bail. Well, you never know, I might even go to trial. Oh, it'll be good to get home. I hope it's that simple. Sorry? Well, there might be complications. <laughs> Why? The solicitor told me that all the evidence is circumstantial. Well, you took Dad's gun, didn't you? That, that might make it look like premeditated murder. I don't know what you're talking about, love. I mean, if you took Dad's gun, it might... Martin Healy was killed with his own gun, not Dad's. You think I killed him with Dad's gun? You could actually think I killed him. Oh, hell, love. Oh, what chance have I got out there? strange it can come and go it can happen when you are young or old when it comes it comes from nowhere when it comes it changes your life Bye.